We're over at my parents' or my mom's place right now, moving stuff in. Uh, as you can see, Garrett is completely taking over the basement. Um, his little Funko Pop collection, Star Wars stuffs. Yeah, it's filled. I mean, the basement is a really decent size. Those uh, tiles need to be replaced. But uh, but yeah, this will be his his little area down here. He's really super excited about having it. Hi booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I am coming to you with another weekly reading vlog. Today is the 19th of April and it's 6 o'clock at night. Um, I'm heating up the oven to make my dinner so I thought I would sit down and have my little chat with you guys um, for today. So, um, usually what I do in these clips is I talk about all the books that I'm hoping to read this week. I usually try and go through all the books. And the thing is um, that I think I kind of mentioned in passing in my last vlog, but I didn't really go into an explanation of what the challenge was that I was doing. This is very much subject to change. I'm actually only going to talk about like the three or four books that I have to get to, like ASAP or like right away this week. The rest of it's all going to be up in the air because the challenge that I'm participating in um, super duper fun, but, and I'm trying not to put pressure on myself and either, and even my teammates are like, don't worry about it, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's an amazing race challenge. And I thought, oh, why the heck not? So it lasts until the first week of June. Um, so May is pretty much going to be, when I do my May TBR, I'm going to have to leave a lot of extra space for extra books. So there are something like 62 different challenges. And as a team, you need to compete, complete all these different challenges. Now you're not going to be completing all 62. I mean, hey, if your team is super fantastic, then maybe you will. But how it goes is um, you're given your first task. And our first task, for example, was to read, um, all of us had to read a book by the same author. And last week, if you watched my vlog, I read Repeat by Kylie Scott. So the author that we all picked was Kylie Scott. So that's why I read that book. And then the next challenge, so when you're done and all your teammates have completed their books, then you let the organizer know and say, hey, we're done. And then they give you your next task. So I thought originally when I was signing up that it was like, you know, a book a week kind of an idea. But no, it, it could be potentially, they say they will not give you a task, more than one task every 48 hours. So every two days. Um, I don't know how, how many, how far other teams are. Right now, as of Sunday, we're on, we're doing our second task, which is to read a book that has three words in the title. Um, so I'll talk about the book that I'm reading in just a few minutes. But um, so, you know, if we finish that one today, then we're gonna get another task tomorrow. Um, and then I'm gonna have to find another book. So that's what I mean. Uh, my TBR could change between now and the end of the month. Like I said, I'm keeping it very, very low key for May. I am still gonna do a May TBR. You guys know I cannot not do a TBR. <laughs> but that it will be subject to change. I do like this challenge, but I don't think this is a challenge I could do if I was still working. Like with the fact that I'm off right now, it's, it's really helpful that I, you know, I have the extra time to do reading, but it's not something I could participate in if I was still working. Um, and I am still also doing the past the parcel challenge, but that is only one book a week. So that one is fine. That that's a non-issue. Um, but anyway, so all that being said, um, yeah, I'm only going to mention a couple books that I, I need to get to um, or need to get finished because, of course, this is also Amish in April week, which is exciting, which is, of course, the readathon read 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 that Elizabeth over at Lizzie Faye Books uh, and I are doing. So um, it's essentially just to read Amish books, and the prompt word is stuck. Um, you know, stick with these books on your TBR. You're reading while stuck in the house, you know. I talked about it all in my uh, announcement video and I'm super, super excited. So I've already started um, one of the books for that challenge as well. The other thing I wanted to mention is that all month long, since I did my TBR back in at the, for April, was the fact that I had the book Grin and Bearded by Penny Reed on my TBR. And it was driving me bonkers that I thought I had read it, but Goodreads said I hadn't. And it didn't even show that I had read it before and just now marked it as, you know, as not even marked. Do you know what I mean? Um, so finally it dawned on me this morning, like the genius that I am, that I keep all the spreadsheets from years before. I have the spreadsheets going back to 2016, I think. Um, 
the uh, Let's Read spreadsheets that I do that I uh, Brock over at Let's Read created. And he changes them a little bit every year and stuff like that. But um, I, I've, I've kept them all going back. So I did a search on last year's. And yes, I did read it back in September. So I went and remarked it on Goodreads. <laughs> and it as soon as I marked it, bam, it came up showing that, yes, I had read it back in September of last year. And I'm like, I knew I had. So that's now off my TBR. So that's, uh, you know what? I really enjoyed it. And I kept saying, you know, I'm cool with rereading it, but I have so many other things to read that I would much rather go on to the next book in the series than reread a book I've already read, especially since it was only in September. If it had been two or three years ago, that's a little bit different, right? So anyway, so that's now off the TBR, but that's fine. Um, so anyway, I just thought, like I said, I would quickly mention the books that I am reading and what I need to get to this week. <clears throat> I have tentative books that I'd like to get to. But again, it'll depend on the challenge. I, I, the first thing when I see these challenges for this um, Amazing Race Challenge is I always look at my TBR first and be like, are there any books that will fit that I can read? Um, and uh, so we shall see. But anyway, um, starting off with my audiobooks. Um, right now I am reading Breaking Silence by Linda Cast Castillo. This is the third book in the Kate Burkholder series. As of right now, I'm about 50% of the way through it and I'm really enjoying it. Um, this is a very dark <laughs> Amish book. Uh, it does fit the Amish theme because it is set in Amish country in Ohio. And our main character, Kate Burkholder, who is the chief of police in town, she is former Amish. Um, she grew up Amish, but did not join the church when she turned 18. Like, uh, didn't do her... I'm not sure what it's called. Is it a baptism? I think so. Um, but she wasn't, you know, brought into the church at the age of 18 or however old they would be for that. But she is, of course, very familiar with Amish culture, spending the first 18 years of her life living Amish. Um, and uh, she's not really in touch with her family, her parents. She, of course, was shunned from the community. Um, her sister Sarah still does talk to her on occasion and, um, and things like that. But this one is about um, uh, a family of three, um, the mother, the father, and the uncle, who ran a pig farm. And I guess that they fell into a pit at the beginning of the book and all three of them died. And at first they thought it was an accident, right? Like, you know, you work on a farm, these kind of things unfortunately happen. It was something to do with the manure and the methane gases that actually was the cause of death um, for a couple, I don't want to give too much away, but now it's been figured out by the medical examiner that no, um, it looks like it may have been murder. And then also there are some people who are going around Amish country who are targeting and committing hate crimes against the Amish, um, killing livestock, setting a buggy on fire and things like that. So Kate, of course, is investigating all these things. And like I said, this is a very, very dark series. Um, it's very much police procedural. This is not a fun little cozy mystery. This gets into some deep topics, some difficult topics. It's very graphic. Um, it is violent. But all that being said, I, I think they are really good books and I really do enjoy them. So I want to finish that one, I'm hoping, by tomorrow. Um, the other one that I want to read and I want to make sure to get to this week, of course, is my other Amish in April audiobook. And that is um, Between You and Me by Susan Wiggs. I'm not sure at all what this one is about, but um, I believe it's like a women's fiction slash mystery set in Amish country. So very intrigued. I've had this one on my radar since it came out and I am very very excited to get to it next. So as for my print or ebooks, uh, these are both ebooks I'm going to talk about. The two that I want to make sure that I get finished um, sooner rather than later. The first one is the one I'm currently reading which is Colton, uh, Colton First Responder and this is by Linda O. Johnson and this is I believe the fourth book in the Coltons of Mustang Valley series. So this is the one with the three word title, uh, Colton First Responder. <laughs> And um, so essentially what I did, because I had nothing on my TBR that was going to fit the three word, you know, uh, prompt, is I actually went to my list that I have of books on NetGalley that I need to read. This one came out, I think, in February. So I'm like, yes, get, let's get another NetGalley book read. So I picked this one. And it is about a woman by the name of Savannah. And she's been accused of murdering her ex-husband. But the body was never found. And at the very beginning of the book, she's being transported um, from court back to prison and there is an earthquake and the driver is killed there goes my oven and the driver is killed and she makes an escape from the back of the van 
and that's where I am right now. Um, so I'm only about 12% of the way through it, but my goal is actually to finish it tonight. I want to finish it in a single day. Um, I, I don't want to let my team down and I don't want to, I'm always the last one. I've been the last one to finish the book and I feel bad. And I even said that I said, guys, I'm so sorry for holding you back. And they're like, don't worry about it. You know, like we're not here to win. We're just here to have some fun. And I'm like, okay, that now I feel a bit better. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I still don't want to hold them too far back. <laughs> so my goal is to get this one finished tonight. If not tomorrow, I've had a bit of a headache for the last couple of days. I think it might be the weather or something. I don't know. Um, but I just want to be able to sit and get some reading done tonight. Um, so then after I finish that one, the next one that I need to get done this week is Gone with the Rogue by Amelia Gray. Um, this is another NetGalley book. And this is also the one that I'm using for the past, the parcel challenge, because um, the category or the prompt for this week that we get on Friday. So I need to have this done by Friday. You don't actually, you actually can have a couple weeks. You just can't find, fall behind more than two weeks, I think. But I like to keep up with it so I don't fall behind. And the prompt for this week was to set read a book that was set in Europe. And I asked, or somebody else asked in the question and answer thread, like, does uh, the UK count as Europe? And uh, the one who's running the challenge, Jane, she said, yes, despite what Brexit says, <laughs> she will allow England. And this one takes place, of course, in London. It's a Regency romance. I'm very, very excited about it. I have not read it Amelia Gray before. And this one looks delightful and I cannot wait to read it. So those are all the books that I need to get to this week. There will be more, of course. Um, I'm debating because I'm reading so many different books and I'm not like sticking to like a strict TBR kind of an idea. I might do little clips every day. We shall see. Um, we'll see how that goes. If I miss a day, I miss a day. But um, I, I want to see if I can do it without this vlog being stupid long. <laughs> so I think if I stick away or stay away from some of the chatty bits, we should be good as I sit here and ramble on. But there's not much going on this week. Um, Garrett starts his new job on Tuesday. So yay on that one. Um, and my job, because I'm going to be at home, is to pack up my stuff. Um, this is probably going to be one of the last areas to be packed up because I do like having the background. Um, but we had um, bags of clothes in the bottom of the closet. It's so bad that we kind of all got, they all got shoved in there. I don't know why or what, for what reason. But a lot of them were stuff that we wanted to get rid of, like stuff that didn't fit anymore. So last night we tore into them, went through everything, and now we actually have a pile, two piles of laundry, of stuff that we actually want to keep. Um, so instead of me doing laundry here at the apartment where we have to pay, um, I think it costs like four fifty to do a load of laundry, like to wash and dry. Um, because Garrett's going to be at work and I've got nothing else to really do, is I'm going to go up to my mom's and she's like, yeah, bring your stuff here. So we're going to bring it there. A lot of it's summer stuff. So we're, I'm going to bring it up there, wash it, and then just leave it there, like hang it up in the closet. So it's one less thing to move later. You know what I mean? So I'm going to do that. I got some other cleaning up stuff to do. I need to try and get into Walmart. It's been so super busy. I'm sure you guys, wherever you are, are the same way that they're having you line up outside and stuff like that. And every time we've gone by, the lineup has been like around the block. I'm not even exaggerating. So I need to try and get to a Walmart. I know they close at eight o'clock at night, so I might try and go over at like seven at night one night. I need to get some big plastic bins, like, you know, the big ones that you would put like Christmas decorations in. I need to get a couple of those to put a lot of my knitting supplies in, um, just so that I can move them easier. And I, I want them in storage essentially, because they're not something that's going to be out and on display Then I can just put them in the closet. So anyway, I'm rambling. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I'm going to make my dinner because as you heard, my oven went off. And um, I will talk to you guys hopefully tomorrow and I'll have an update. So, and I'll hopefully I'll have that book done, both books done. So I'll have an update for reading for you guys. Talk to you then. Bye. Hi guys. Happy Sunday. It is the Sunday. It's Monday. Happy Monday. It's the 20th of April and it's about quarter to 10 at night. So I thought I would sit down and give you guys an update for today, a reading update for today. Um, actually getting ready to go to bed soon. Not because I'm, well, I am tired. Um, but it's an early morning tomorrow. Tomorrow's Garrett's first day at work at his new job. So that's exciting, nerve wracking, exciting. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've been sitting here watching a bit of booktube. I've been doing some reading, <clears throat> multitasking and, uh, knitting on my blanket. Um, but yeah, reading update for today. So, um, and nothing else interesting has happened today. 
So um, I did finish a book this morning. I finished reading Breaking Silence by Linda Castillo, um, the third book in the Kate Burkholder series. I read this one on audio from my library. Um, it was really good. This was also for Amish in April, the readathon that Elizabeth uh, from Lizzie Fay Loves Books and I are doing together. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed this one. I do like this series. If you've been watching me for a bit, you know I've mentioned this series a couple of times because um, uh, I've read the first two books. And um, it's good. It is a police procedural about a, um, a woman by the name of Kate Burkholder. It's the Kate Burkholder series. She's the chief of police in a small town in Ohio called Painter's Mill. And it is a town that has a very prominent Amish community. And she herself is former Amish. So I think I talked about this book yesterday. That um, an Amish family dies, a mother, a father, and an uncle. And then a um, there's also a rash of like hate crimes against the Amish population. So um, I don't want to say much more than that because I went into this not knowing really anything about the book. Just knowing that I had liked the previous books in the series. And it was good. I think I ended up giving it four and a half stars. Um, I really like the characters in this story uh, or in this series. And the story itself is really engaging. The story kind of kept me guessing. And when the, uh, you know, you hate saying the whodunit, um, but the, you know, when everything starts getting pieced together at the end, I was kind of like, oh, okay, I didn't expect that. Um, this series can get dark. Uh, these stories can get very dark. They deal with a lot of dark subject matter. Um, I don't want to say too much about what it is because it might give away some stuff. But, I mean, obviously murder is a big one. And, you know, hate crimes are a huge deal. Um, so, yeah. So just know going in, these are not a cozy mystery or anything at all like that. These are definitely a police procedural. The other thing I want to talk about about this series is that this is something that I could absolutely see be moved to the big or small screen, like to become a Netflix TV show or, you know, do one of the books as a movie because these characters are so vivid and so, they've got such great personalities and they're so, you know, the personalities are so individual. Um, Kate is awesome. Um, she has a guy, I don't want to say too much about their relationship, but his name is um, John Tomasetti and I picture him every time. Uh, they talk about him and just the way the narrator does his voice too. Um, I know the, the actor was in Terminator. He played the guy who went goopy, I think. I don't know. But he was also in the X-Files. That's how I know him. Um, the seasons that Mulder was gone, um, season, season and a half that Mulder was gone, he came in and it's that guy. That's who I picture when I think of this character. There's also Pickles, who is um, like a seven-year-old a uh, police officer, uh, he's a detective, and um, he works with Kate, and um, he's delightful. He is like a crotchety old man, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then there's Mona, who um, is the dispatch. She does dispatch at night. She's a delight, you know, like they, they mentioned in the book something like the way she dresses would put, you know, would make Madonna blush, and um, she's got fire red hair, but she really wants to be a police officer, and I mean, the characters make this series so much, you know, like that's what there is a little, I, w I don't want to say there's a bit of, there's humor in this because there really isn't that much. Kate is a very straight and narrow character, um, but there is a few things that would make you like chuckle a little bit and the characters are absolutely worth the time for this series. So yeah, so I finished that today. Um, I started today reading, um, uh, Gone with the Rogue by Amelia Gray, which I think is the second book in a series. I can't... The True Love series or something like that. And so far, our main character, um, Julia, um, the book opens and she's stuck up in a tree. She's trying to rescue a butterfly that got caught in a net for her son because, you know, he was just like, oh, save the butterfly. And she gets stuck in this tree and when part of her dress gets caught on a branch and she can't get it off. So her um, governess and her son go back to the house to get scissors so she can kind of cut herself loose. And this gentleman by the name of, I don't know his name, because the thing is with, with historical romance novels, they last name is Stockton, is they don't often go by their first names. They're, you know, it's always Mr. or Lord or whomever, right? I think it's Stockton is the last name. And he is a, he would be what a modern day you call a shipping magnet. Um, 
or maggot or maggot shipping maggot <laughs> clearly it's late <laughs> magnet um and he owns a shipping company and he spends like a year or more away um from london and you know he's just gotten back from another um uh trading or selling expedition he travels all over the world and um uh julia's husband um she's a widow her husband actually died four years earlier in a uh, seafaring accident. So, um, but he helps her down from this tree. And, um, yeah, so the story's going to kind of go from there. I'll update you guys. I'm actually hoping to finish it tomorrow. It's about 350 pages, but I'd really like to get it done tomorrow. I do not have much to do. Right now, I'm about a quarter of the way through it, and I do plan on doing some more reading tonight before I go to bed. So, I don't think I'll get halfway through it tonight, but I should get a good chunk read tonight. And then the rest tomorrow. And tomorrow I start a new audiobook too, which is exciting. So anyway, that's all I have for today, you guys. Um, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. We are having a rather productive morning here. Um, editing a video now. Uh, and uh, hanging out with uh, Mr. Gorin. <laughs> He's bashful. I also did some packing this morning. Let me see if I can... Sorry for the mess all over the floor, but of course, you know... Those two bins are filled filled with yarn. The top are knitting bags. So, yeah, I was productive this morning. That whole table back there um, got cleaned off. It doesn't look like I did much, but it, believe me, guys, it was like a Jenga pile, like, with stuff piled on top of stuff. And I got rid of a bunch of stuff. I purged some stuff, which was great. Uh, you know, books and magazines that, not books, but, you know, like magazines and stuff that have been sitting around there forever. So I cleaned that all off, and then I um, I uh, ran some garbage out, got those all packed up. I'm going to go over to my mom's later. Uh, there goes Bernard into the room. Um, go over to my mom's later to drop those off. And yeah, so that's our big plans for today. Um, I'll talk to you later. Hi, guys. Happy Friday. It is the 24th of April, and it is just before noon. So yeah, I haven't talked to you guys since Monday night. <laughs> Sorry. Um, things have been a little bit crazy around here over the last three or four days. Um, yeah, we've kind of gone up, down, and then back up again. Um, yeah, it's it's been a little bit nuts. So I will share that with you guys. I, I think part of the reason I haven't recorded is because a lot of stuff was really up in the air. And we were kind of both, Garrett and I were, have been in like not the best moods over the last few days um, with the stuff that was going on. And the dust has settled at this point, so we're in a good place. So I'm like, I gotta sit down and record. Because not only do I want to share with you what's been going on, but I have five books, five books to share with you guys. I actually had to go back and watch the clips from Sunday and Monday to figure out exactly what books I talked to you guys about <clears throat> that I finished. And I realized, I'm really kind of glad I did that because I realized that there was a book I forgot to talk about. So since Monday, I have finished four books. Plus, um, I had a book that I forgot to mention on Monday that I had finished. So at least I'm pretty sure. I watched the clip and I don't think I talked about this one. And I watched the one on Sunday as well. And I just mentioned that I was reading it. So not exactly sure if it's, if I go ahead and I get to editing and I realize that I did talk about it. Um, sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'll just cut that part out of this. So if you don't see me talk about that book, you'll know why. So anyway, um, yeah, so like I said, things have been really, really up and down here. So long story short, <laughs> no, you guys know I like to do this. Um, long story long, um, on, so Monday night uh, was the night before Garrett started his, his new job. So on Tuesday, I took him to work and he was tired going into work because A, he wasn't used to, like both of us, weren't used to being up and out the door that early in the morning um and he didn't sleep that well the night before because of course he was excited he was nervous it was all those things before you start a new job so that was fine he he said he had a good day he was trained on a lot of stuff he was given a key fob to get into the building and blah 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 so he got home on tuesday night um kept himself up for as long as he could and then um crashed out and went to bed and he woke up on Wednesday morning and took him to work. And he called me about 20 minutes later. He's like, come and pick me up. And I'm like, uh, why? And he's like, oh, they let me go. After a day. With no explanation, no nothing. 
and both of us are like, WTF, like, who does that? What company does that? Um, and the whole thing was through an employment agency. So anyway, they didn't give him any reason. I mean, he was there a day. They technically don't have to, but still, it's kind of like, well, why? So anyway, when um, we got home, he got a call from the employment agency. I guess they had been notified. And she said that they told her the reason was because he spent the day complaining. And I'm like, okay, I know my husband. And my dad actually worked with him years and years ago. And like dad always said, Garrett was one of the best guys to work with. Like he would come in, he would do his job and he would go home. Like that was Garrett, right? Um, you know, you mumble under your breath at things, but like he said to me, he goes, the only thing he can think of was that at one point, I guess they were teaching him how to use one of those like scanner gun things. And he was joking about it and saying like, oh, you'd think that they would have done something with the technology on this or something because they were the same that he used when he worked at other jobs. And, you know, he goes, but still it was one comment and it wasn't even rude. It was like more of a joke and he was laughing. But I said, I don't think that's what it was. I just think that maybe, because I think there might've been a couple other people starting that day too. And this was like their way of seeing who they liked and blah, blah, blah. So I, we were both really upset. And I think the bigger reason Garrett was pissed was because, you know, this employment agency now thinks that this is how he is. Do you know what I mean? That a company's complained about him in a way and blah 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 so yeah he wasn't very impressed about that which is totally understandable so that was on Wednesday morning so both of us were like great you know this job had been in the works for weeks and now he didn't have anything there's really not much for me right now because of the whole COVID-19 thing companies are just not hiring for office positions um and even for for positions for himself sorry Sorry about that. Our mail carrier came. <laughs> and I know that um, in the hallway you can really hear everything. So I didn't want her to think that, you know, there's a weird person who lives in that apartment. <laughs> I'm plenty weird, but I don't need everybody else knowing that. So <laughs> you guys know it. That's enough. So anyway, so he was, like I said, he was more upset about the fact that um, this agency now thought that way of him. And it was going to not help his chances in the long run. And like I said, there's not a lot of office jobs right now. Financially, we're still okay, um, especially because we're moving. If we were not moving, it, it I would be a lot more panicky. So literally, he got off the phone with the employment agency, and 10 minutes later, he got a message from another employment agency saying that, asking if he would go right away to an interview for another job. And Gareth's like, yeah, no problem. So we headed out the door, and I took him to this um to this interview at this other place and um it was another forklift job like another warehouse type job and he um you know did his kind of showed him what he could do on a like they they put you through the paces on the forklift to make sure that you actually you can write anything you want on your resume they're going to test you to see and then he had a sit down interview with the guy and the guy told him there's like five other people up for the position and that if he got it or if they want to see him again they would contact him and then that was that. So um, we decided to go to the grocery store because we had to pick up a couple things. So we went to Walmart and we got back in the car from Walmart and his he had gotten a voicemail, but he didn't hear his phone ringing in Walmart, right? Because it was in his back pocket of his pants. And so he listened to the voicemail and it was about another position somewhere else. And this place actually, his face lit up like a kid at Christmas. Um, it is at a long-term care facility, which at first made me very nervous because of the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Here in the province of Ontario, from my understanding, if I'm reading the reports and the news articles correctly, is that the highest percentage of people who are testing positive are in these long-term care facilities. Like 70% mm -hmm. of the people in the province of Ontario who have COVID-19 mm -hmm. are either residents or people who work at long-term mm -hmm. care facilities. So it really made me nervous the fact that he was, you know, that this was a position. Now, from what Garrett told me is that he applied for this position like months ago. So my assumption is, is that they're having a very difficult time filling it because of the virus. So um, since I met Garrett, when I first met Garrett 11 years ago now, he was actually going to school, um, going back to school to become a PSW, a personal support worker. He's always wanted to work with people like in a medical type setting 
his ultimate goal would be to be like more hands-on, not a nurse per se, but somebody who's like an orderly or a porter or something like that. He just wants to do that kind of a thing to be able to help people without actually having the medical part of it, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, the position that he, uh, that this job was for, um, was actually a maintenance position. So it's like, he'd be dealing with the sanitation, he'd be dealing with the maintenance, he'd be dealing with, um, loading and unloading of the trucks because this facility is very, very, very nice. It is one of the top ranked in the city of Toronto. It is gorgeous. And, um, they have two restaurants inside this facility. Mm -hmm. I guess if you go to visit your relative, you can eat in these restaurants. So there's loading and unloading of the trucks of like foodstuffs and things like that. So anyway, the guy talked to Garrett on the phone for a bit, like Garrett had called him back on Wednesday afternoon and the two of them had a nice little chat on the phone. And um, the guy said to him, he goes, okay, I'm gonna pass your information over to HR and somebody will be in touch with you. And Garrett and I said, okay, great. You know, like Garrett's like, okay, that's cool. And I just thought, okay, you know, maybe we'll hear something by the end of this week, early next week. I mean, who knows, right? But he was super stoked about it because, like I said, this is, I mean, he's not working one-on-one -on -one with people. He actually would have no contact with any of the residents in the facility, um, which makes me feel a little bit better with the whole virus thing. If this virus thing wasn't going on, it wouldn't matter. But, um, so anyway, um, that was at like noon. So at like four o'clock on Wednesday afternoon or five o'clock, he gets a phone call from the guy back and the guy's like, yeah, do you want the job? And Garrett's like, yeah. And he goes, okay, you got it. He goes, I'm sending you over the stuff now. Um, he, the guy said that he had sent it over to HR and said, blah, blah, blah. And the girl from HR goes, if you're happy with him, I'm happy with him. He didn't even interview other than the, the interview on the phone. Like that is how desperate they are to get people into these facilities to help because they just don't have it. So Garrett and I kind of jokingly said, and, I, and I'm not, please don't take this the wrong way if you have a relative who has COVID-19 or anything at all like that, my heart goes out to you seriously, but we kind of joke saying it took a pandemic for Garrett to get a job that he has always dreamed of having. <laughs> so this is his foot in the door that, you know, if he puts his head down and does his work and blah, 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 um, you know, he should be just fine. Um, and then this will get him experience because this job is way downtown Toronto, um, which is going to be quite the distance from when we, for when we move. Um, luckily right now, because I'm off work, I can drive him in and pick him up. That's not a problem. And especially because of the pandemic, people are not out on the road. So it was really easy getting into the city. It was actually creepy. It was kind of like a ghost town this morning, you guys, no joke. So, um, he started today. Today was his first day. Yesterday, he had a bunch of like online training to do. Um, even though he's not working one-on-one -on -one with the patients, he still needs to know like what codes mean. Like if they call a code black or a code white or whatever in the facility, what that means. You know, he needs to know that if he has to interact with a patient for any reason, which might come later, you don't know. Like if he ends up having to clean rooms or things like that, like the standard protocol and stuff like that. So He's super, super excited. And I know it's not the most glamorous job in the world, but in his little way, he's seeing this as he's helping people and he's really, really pleased. And I'm really pleased for him. Um, you know, that it just sort of, we hit this like dark part, dark period for a little while, you know, like for Wednesday where we didn't know what was gonna happen and you know, with neither of us working. And I was actually looking into starting to perhaps doing deliveries for Skip the Dishes and stuff like that. But then this came and he's like, you know, I'm going to take this job. It's, it's, it's actually better paying than the last job that he had. So we're super stoked. So that's kind of what's been going on. And like I said, it's been really up and down the last few days, which is why I have not sat down to talk to you guys. So I am now going to share with you all the books that I finished over the last week. But one second, because Garrett just texted me and I just want to know what's going on. So hold on, I'll be right back. He was just telling me, taking my lunch break and I texted him back and said, I'm recording real quick. He goes, okay, text me when you're done. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's get into the books that I have finished over the last few days. So the book that I did not share with you guys was Colton First Responder by Linda O. Johnson. I gave this one three and a half stars. I think it was book four in the Coltons of Mustang Valley series. I talked about this one on Sunday, like, kind of like what the premise was about. I enjoyed it. It was really interesting that, you know, she's on the run because she broke out of this, um, this uh, van that was taking her from court back to prison. She was accused of killing her ex-husband. And she meets up with this guy and the two of them, like, you know, he kind of believes her right away. 
because they they knew each other before that they had met at you know functions and things like that and that he's kind of helping her locate her ex-husband who they you know like she's being accused of murdering him but yet there's no body now to my understanding i think there needs to be no body for quite some time but this was all like within like a month so it just seems like part of the thing that i didn't like about the book is that from the time that he was supposedly killed to when she was like arrested it seemed like a very short period of time and i think that there needs to be more investigation as far as i'm concerned or they need more substantial evidence and i think it was just like a bloody knife that was found that you know um is is what the police were going after or going on or the district attorney was going on in you know arresting her for his murder which you know again there's not even a body so i mean it was entertaining it was um it was intriguing and I've got the hiccups and I did like it. I mean, three and a half stars. It's more than an average rating from me. It is the fourth in the series, but um, I think the rest of the books just kind of follow different people in this town of Mustang Valley, which is in Arizona. Um, <clears throat> and I did, I did enjoy it. Um, and sorry, it's been a little while since I finished some of these books, so I do apologize. The next one that I finished was With This Heart by R.S. Gray. And this one I actually ended up giving four and a half stars to. Sorry, I've got my little notes right here, so I didn't forget any books. Guys, this one was fantastic. Um, this was another one for the um, Amazing Race Challenge that I talked about, that we had to read a book that was published in all four of us on the team had to finish, had to read a book that was published in the same year. So we each had to pick a year, like we had between the four of us, we had to pick one year and all read a book from that year. So the rest of them, I said, you guys pick a year and I can find something real easy. And I did. I found this one on Audible and I am so happy I listened to this book. So I have read one other book by R.S. Gray, which was The Fox and the Hound, which I really, really liked. I read that one last year. And this one was a bit of a departure. While it is a contemporary romance, um, this was definitely more very borderline of YA to new adult. Um, I would definitely classify it as new adult because, and it even says it in the description, this is 17 plus because there is swearing and there is adult content in it. But unlike a lot of new adult books that you read, it wasn't overly saturated with adult content, if that makes sense. Like, and I'm not trying to generalize new adult books, but that's what I find is that most of them are just about the physical relationship between the two characters, whereas this one definitely was the story of the two of them. So our characters were Abby and Beck. And, um, I identified with her so much right from, like, right from the beginning. She was quirky. The story is told in first person. This, she was quirky. She was outgoing. Um, she didn't take life too seriously. And she almost couldn't in a way. Um, two months prior to the start of the book, she had a heart transplant. She, it sounds like she had a, a heart condition. Um, I have to give credit to the author because nowhere did I hear them say that it was a congenital condition. It was a congestive heart failure, which is heart failure you go into later in life for whatever reason. Congenital means you were born with it. And I have read so many books that have a character who has a congenital condition, like I do, which is what I have as a congenital condition, that at some point they're, oh, they're cured. No, 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 no. You are never cured from a congenital heart condition. Never. I, I don't. I'm sorry for those of you who have relatives or children or anything at all like that. It, there's no cure for that. Anything that is done, any surgeries, any um, any treatments, anything at all, and I hate to use this word because it does sound final, is all palliative. It's to help you live longer. And I mean, I'm 41 years old and I am, knock on wood, I'm in really good condition. Like I'm, uh, they see no reason why I can't live a perfectly normal life continuing going forward. So props to the author for not saying it was a congenital condition because after the transplant, she was quote unquote cured, as it says in the book. Which if you were in congestive heart failure, yes, probably a heart transplant would do that. So anyway, she gets this heart transplant and she decides, I don't want to give away why she decides to go on this road trip, but she decides to take a road trip. And she meets this guy back at the very beginning of the book. And he just kind of invites himself along. They've never met before. They have no idea who the other person is. And he invites himself along. And it's essentially their romance. This book made me cry in spots. Um, she has a friend at the hospital that she met when she was on the transplant list um, named Caroline, who was just a delightful character. 
Um, you know, I understood her parents because, um, you know, I guess she'd been sick since she was young. Um, but again, I don't recall them saying that she was born with it. I think it came on later. Um, but, um, you know, her mom had, um, was pretty much taking care of her her whole life. And here she was now at two months after transplant, she wanted to kind of live her own life and do her own thing. Now she was kind of given the second chance and it was a beautiful, beautiful story. Uh, you know, again, there is some adult content in here, you guys. So if that's something that you shy away from, I listened to it on audio. The narration on this was really, really great. Um, it is um, part of the Audible Escape package, but I just, you know, if you're not comfortable with it, you're not losing anything if you just kind of fast forward through those parts. Um, a small bit of swearing, nothing major, but this was just such a beautiful story and I absolutely loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, you know, I, I just thought it was great and the ending of it was super cheesy and super sweet and just what I needed this week. <laughs> it was, it was wonderful. Um, the next book that I finished was Gone with the Rogue by Amelia Gray and I gave this one three and a half stars. I enjoyed this one. It was a fun historical romance. Um, my biggest issue with it was, is that it started off great. It started, like, I was like right into the story and it's about a woman by the name of... Julia, I think her name was Julia and his name. And you know, it's so funny. I think on Sunday, I couldn't remember or Sunday or Monday, <coughs> whichever day the clip was that I was talking about this book, that I couldn't remember the guy's name. The guy's name is Garrett, <laughs> which is of course my husband's name. And I couldn't remember that. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been, it's been weird this week, you guys. So anyway, story of Julia and Garrett. She is a widow with a young boy with a four-year-old son. And, um, Weird. I keep hearing people in the hallway and she meets Garrett in a very meet cute part of the story at the very beginning I thought it was absolutely delightful the way that it was done so he's back in London he owns a fleet of ships that transport goods um, of course this is Regency England and um, so this is his first time back in London in like a year and he's back for the season kind of an idea and she is a widow living under her father-in-law's like roof um, and, um, the father-in-law, the Duke is very, very strict with her on how a proper widow should, you know, go about her life. And he's pretty much trying to take control of her son away from her. And this is how the son's going to be raised. This is my grandson. You know, he's only four years old, but he already wants to bring in a tutor and, you know, four-year-old little boys just want to run around and play and have fun. Yes, there's a bit of learning, you know, the governess teaches him some things, but most of his time is spent through learning, play learning, essentially. Whereas the grandfather wants him like sitting at a desk for six hours a day with a tutor and learning all of his, his, his things. So when he gets to eaten, he'll be fantastic, you know? And, um, plus the fact that she's not allowed to have any friends and she's not allowed to court anybody. She is to be a proper widow until she, till she dies essentially. And, um, she's trying to find out, she knows that the father, her father-in-law is holding these secrets. The Duke is holding these secrets. So, um, She's trying to find out what they are so she can expose them that she knows them so she can essentially use it as blackmail to take her son and go and enjoy her, her spinster, not spinsterhood, her widowhood and, you know, have a life essentially. And Garrett agrees to kind of help her do these things. I really liked Julia. I thought she had a lot of spunk. I thought she was very sweet. I love the fact that she was a vegetarian. Um, you know, considering this was Regents of England, that's probably something that you didn't see very often. Um, and it was a cute story. And like I said, the beginning of it was really good, but then it just kind of petered out towards the end. And that kind of disappointed me a little bit. Um, but other than that, it was really great. I, I did enjoy it. This was my first Amelia Gray. I will definitely read more from her because I really like her characters and her writing is fantastic. A lot of description, not a ton of dialogue I found in this book, but a lot of description and things like that. A lot of internal thoughts from the characters. Um, and I enjoyed it. Like I said, this is the second book in the First Comes Love series. And it's about, the series is a trilogy, and it's about three friends who run or own a girls' boarding school, and all three of their husbands, I believe, died at sea. So, like I said, she's a widow, and her husband had died at sea, and now she's kind of striking up this relationship with a sea captain, which is, of all things, which she vowed she would never do, um, regardless whether or not the Duke would let her court someone, essentially. So, yeah, cute story. I liked it. 
Um, the next one that I finished was Password to Larkspur Lane uh, by Carolyn Keene. This is the 10th book in the original Nancy Drew Mystery, Story Mystery Stories series. This one, I, these ones are so, I never know how to describe these stories because there are so many pieces that make up this story. Like Nancy isn't just solving one mystery, she's solving like three in one. It's, this is to do with an old lady who disappears, a missing charm bracelet, people are after Nancy, you know, it was, this book was written in 1933 and it, they're just so charming. I gave it three and a half stars, I don't think I mentioned that, and I liked it. I mean, these are really, really fun. I don't think I read these ones, like, I think I only read up to book six originally when I read the series when I was a kid. So the next 165 books are all new to me. And they're really fun. They're really quaint. You know, you know that Nancy is in danger, but it's nothing. It Murder just doesn't seem to be a thing in these books. Does that make sense? You know, even the bad guys don't typically have a gun or anything like that. You know, threats are made, but it's more that I'm going to beat you up than it is that I'm going to kill you kind of an idea. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one and I thought it was cute. Um, these are fun. If you can find them at your library, they are really are a delight to read. And the last book I want to share with you, I just finished before I sat down to talk to you guys, which is why I waited till now to do it. And that was Between You and Me by Susan Wiggs. This is a book that I read for um, Amish in April that I am co-hosting with Elizabeth over at Lizzie Fay Loves Books. And I gave this book four stars. This was not my favorite Susan Wiggs. I was a little disappointed in it, and I don't think it had anything to do with the writing. This totally had to do with the way the book was presented. Um, so I'm kind of throwing that fault at the publisher in a way. So going into the story, I thought it was an Amish story about um, uh, like a struggle between an, om an, uh, an Amlisher, an Amish person, and an Englisher for something in court because that's how the book reads it talks about secrets it talks about a court battle on the back of the book for the first 90 percent 80 percent of this book it's a romance this is a contemporary romance period um it is about a woman by the name of reese and a guy an amish jenna she is an englisher who um uh lives in philadelphia and she is a medical student uh, about to start her residency and he is an Amish man, and his name is Caleb. His name is Caleb. Sorry. Sorry. Um, and his name is Caleb, and he is an Amish man. But he never took, he never joined the church. So he's got a bit of a backstory that I'm not going to reveal. I'll let you read the book. Um, and his nephew that he has care of ends up getting very, very badly hurt in a farm accident. And at the beginning of the book, his nephew is airlifted to this hospital. They live in a, a small Amish community in Pennsylvania and is airlifted to Philadelphia to a big hospital where Reese just happened, like where she works. And that's how the two of them meet. Um, her and the uncle end up meeting. And um, they strike up a friendship at first. And then, of course, because of the gravity of his nephew's injury, um, they need to stay quite a while in Philadelphia. And he ends up rooming with her next door neighbor who she is best friends with this guy um and so the two of them reese and caleb kind of strike up a friendship and you know the story kind of goes from there about the two of them and the clashing of the two worlds which i really enjoyed and all those things i did like the characters i wasn't absolutely certain about reese i think she, i felt she needed a bit more of a backbone in discuss in like dealing with her parents like yes they have given you everything but they kept pushing her towards a certain residency in in medical school and mainly because they wanted her to join their practice in pediatrics and she realized later that might not be what she wanted to do so um yeah i i just felt that she should have stood up for herself just a little bit more um caleb i really liked he seemed he seemed to be even though i don't think he was he seemed to be quite a bit older than her in the way i guess i guess you know your life really does determine not it's not just your age for your maturity it's your life you know what you've lived through and he's lived through a lot and um has dealt with a lot of heartache and a lot of things and he just seemed a bit older than her um especially because he had a, a niece who was like almost 16 years old so he had like care of his niece and nephew so i'm not really doing a great job at, at explaining this so like the last 20 percent of the book came this secret 
and it was all wrapped up in a tidy bow very, very quickly. Again, this was marketed, as far as I'm concerned, as more of a mystery or more of, not necessarily a mystery, but do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, as if, like, there was going to be this big battle between the Amish and the English and blah, blah, blah. And that wasn't the case at all. You know, there was a secret. There was, um, you know, a court thing. But all of that was, like, wrapped up in the last 20%. It wasn't even mentioned in the first 80% of the book. So, I mean, you got a glimpse of it at the very, very beginning. But um, nothing happens until the end, right? So, anyway... It wasn't a bad book. I enjoyed it. The one thing I do have to say that I liked about it um, was the fact that I have read a lot of Amish romances and they tend to paint the community in a certain light. That it's this quaint and charming and wonderful plain life and all is well and all is good, you know, except for the uh, um, the Kate Burkholder series. That's a completely different ballgame. But I think you guys know what I'm talking about those of you who have read a number of Amish romances or Amish books. Whereas this one painted the community in a more realistic light, I believe. That not everything is perfect. That just like for all the rest of us, there are certain families that are struggling, that are dealing with heartache and hardships and, you know, not the best parenting and that it's not idyllic. You know what I mean? And I really, really appreciated that. But while she did that, she still didn't make it seem like she was coming down on them, if that makes sense. They were still like, they had their good points, but they also had their bad points. And, you know, that not everything was perfect, but it wasn't all horrible either. If I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly, but I think you guys might understand what I'm trying to say. So anyway, so yeah, so that was really good. Um, and I liked it. I mean, four stars. It wasn't the best Susan Wiggs I've ever read, um, but it wasn't... A horrible book by any means. I did enjoy listening to it quite a bit. Um, and of course the writing is always just wonderful with these. And the narration on it was quite good too. It was narrated by uh, Tanya Eby, who I really, really like. She's she's a favorite of mine. I'm finding it's funny, the more and more I'm listening to audiobooks, not only do you get to know authors and be like, oh, I like Susan Wiig's books, or oh, I love Jill Shalvis's books, or blah, blah, blah. But then you start to get to know the narrators too, like, oh, I love Tanya, or Tanya Eby. I love Karen White, you know, Therese Plummer, Rosalind Landor. Like, these are all narrators that I adore. And I'm like, oh, I know I'm going to really like this audiobook because I really like that narrator kind of an idea. So, yeah, um, it's just like a fun little observation when you listen to a lot of audiobooks. So, currently reading, I thought I'd update you on that because I may or may not have another book done tomorrow <laughs> for my last clip of the vlog. Um, right now, I haven't started either of these books yet, but today I plan on starting The Vampire Knitting Club by Nancy... Nancy Warren. This is the first book in the Vampire Knitting Club series. It's from Kindle Unlimited and it's a cozy mystery series, essentially as the title suggests, vampires and witches who knit and there's a mystery. I'm intrigued. Sign me up. Cannot wait to start it. And then the other one I plan on starting today on audio actually is um, <sighs> Sunrise at Half Moon Bay by Robin Carr. Um, I'm actually starting this one on audio. I did spend the audible credit and get it. Um, I have a bunch of credits because I had, hadn't really been using them, but I thought, okay, why not? Um, this book has already been published, but this is one of my net galley reads for this, this month. And because the reason I decided to listen to this one on audio is because I have been having some issues with Robin Carr's books over the last few books that I've read by her. I haven't absolutely loved them. So I thought that maybe audio might be the way to go and might help me get through it a bit faster. This is more of a women's fiction novel about two sisters who are vastly different in age. Like the older sister's 20 years older than the younger sister. So she was like a full grown adult when her younger sister was born. And I guess now that they're both adults, they're trying to um, navigate a relationship together and life in general. So I will update that one more tomorrow. Anyway, guys, I have yammered on quite long enough in this clip, but really you only had a couple other clips this week. Um, but I will definitely be back to talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care, everybody. See you then. Bye. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Saturday night. It's about 11.30 and um, I'm getting ready to head off to bed soon. Um, I haven't been feeling that great today. I've had a, a headache and my shoulder's been bothering me all day. Um, my shoulder, my neck, the back of my head. I know it's poor posture. Um, I have been doing too much crafting. I have been sitting at my laptop too much. And the thing is with my laptop, the way it's set up, 
it's not, you know, it's not like it is at an office where, you know, you've got your desk and stuff like that. I've got like a tray table that I sit at when I'm on the couch and it's just not good for your body. Um, and I've pretty much buggered up my shoulder in a way. Um, from, you know, the repetitive, like the way I'm sitting on the, with the laptop, the way my shoulder sits, um, when I'm typing and, um, and knitting the same thing. So I've actually now what I've had to do, like, sorry for the thumb. When I do sit here and knit is I've got this like big cushion pillow and, um, I stick it up underneath my arm. So I've got something to rest it on. Um, because if not, it just kind of hangs. It's, it's, it's hard to explain, but those of you who, who do anything like that, you might understand what I'm talking about. Um, you know, it's like having like the arm of the chair kind of an idea. So yeah, um, so I've been feeling that great today. Um, I did nap this afternoon for like a good two hours, but I am going to try and get to bed soon because I do not want to be up till two o'clock in the morning, uh, which is why I don't like napping, but you know, it happens. So, um trying to think. Uh, oh yeah, I reading update. It's the last clip of the vlog for uh, for this week. Um, this is, I don't know how much shorter it's going to be. I started editing today um, and I'm going to finish editing tomorrow morning. Um, but um, I did finish another book today, you guys. Uh, I finished reading. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. I read the majority of it last night. Pardon me. And then I couldn't... Um, and I read the majority of this book last night, and I was going to finish it last night, but then I got so tired I just went to bed. Anyway, it's Mary Ann, Mrs. Logan by Anna Martin, book 46, 47 in the Baby Search Club series. I can't remember which one. Got to admit, this book has my favorite cover in the entire series. You'll see the cover up here. The image on that cover is just the epitome of the Baby Search Club to me. The friendship, the epitome of the friendship of the babies, of the girls in the Babysitter's Club. And I'm pretty sure the pictures of the first four members. It's Christy, Claudia, Marianne, and Stacy. Pretty sure the blonde is Stacy. But that scene never actually happens in the book, which is a little depressing and kind of, you know. But that being said, how much I love the cover of this book. This book was so boring. Oh my gosh, you guys, so boring. So essentially the entire thing is, is that Marianne, Mrs. Logan about six books earlier or something like that Marianne and Logan broke up because he was becoming a bit too controlling um you know he'd call and say hey let's go to the movies and she'd be like oh you know I'm going out with Dawn or something like that and he'd be like well break your plans and come out with me and she would um but anyway so they ended up breaking up and um now of course she misses them and blah 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 and then it turns out of course as it does in these books that there is a huge project um an English project and Marianne and Logan are put on the same team together like the same group together for this project and essentially they're studying uh certain authors young adult authors um some they talked about in the book some of the authors were like at for the 80s would have been you know like actual authors and then some of them um they were made up um and anyway um so essentially the entire book is Marianne and Logan and the other two people on this team doing this project and her kind of pining over him, but he's actually going out with Koki, uh, Koki I think is, I always want to say in my head it's Cookie, but it's C-O-K-I-E, so I think it's Koki. Um, and she's like the mortal enemy of the Baby Stars Club. And uh, yeah, so he's kind of seeing her a little bit and, you know, they're going to the movies and to get to sports games, like the school playing like basketball and stuff like that and um and then of course at the end spoiler alert Marianne and Logan get back together so yeah honestly guys it was there's nothing happened in this book it was so boring so um I ended up giving it three stars just because it's a baby stars club book I didn't hate it it just was not the story just wasn't that interesting I mean yes it's a middle grade novel like let's not kid ourselves right I'm not expecting something spectacular, but you know, sometimes there is stuff that actually happens. Nothing really happens in this one. So anyway, yeah, that's my last update for the week for what I've read. Um, right now, um, I actually did not listen to any audiobooks today. I just wasn't feeling it today for some reason. Um, I, I think because we got a bit of a later start. Well, not really. We were up early. Then I was editing and Garrett and I were talking. We were kind of tidying up around here. and. 
I tend to, especially on the weekends, like when I'm at home, um, I get m prefer to get most of my audiobook listening time done in the mornings. Um, not that I, um, sorry, I, I know you can see that it's horrible. I'm 41 years old and look at my freaking chin. I'm so mad. Um, <laughs> it's got to be stress. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I, I am attempting to, you know, don't look at the man behind the curtain kind of an idea. Um, I am, um, and yeah, so anyway, I tend to do most of my audiobook listening in the morning. And I just didn't, I didn't this morning. I was going to listen to it for a bit this afternoon. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm just not in the mood today. Um, that's all. That's, uh, you know, not that I, you know, I'll, I'll definitely be listening tomorrow to my audiobook. It's just today. Today's just been kind of an off day, I guess. Um, but I did start reading. Oh, it's over there, and I don't feel like reaching it for it. I'll pop a picture up here. I started The Henna Artist today um, by A Alki. I'm sorry. I can't remember. I can't pronounce it. It's, it'll be on the cover of the book. And uh, this is a historical fiction novel taking place in Chapur, uh, India, in the 1950s about a woman who... Um, she is a henna artist and she is very very um bless you bernard that was the cat sneezing and she is very very um well known in the upper in upper society for doing the best henna work and she has her clients and she goes to their homes and she does the henna it kind of when i think about it it's like almost having like a salon like going to get your like somebody coming to your house to do your nails or your hair or something like that and um so anyway, that's, I'm only about 50 or 60 pages in through that right now. Um, but I do plan on getting a good chunk of it read tomorrow. But anyway, that is for another vlog. Um, thank you guys all so very much for watching. Sorry this one was a little bit odd this week, but um, we're back to normal next week. And I will talk to you guys then. Take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye. We shall end on a video of Bernard. Say hi, Bean. He's a good boy. Mm -hmm.